Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We've got two guests coming up here. We have Srinivas Nagarajan. He is the VP Product and Operations at Deluxe. Welcome, Srinivas. And Prashanth Krishnamurthy, he is the SVP and Growth Officer at Cubotica. Thank you so much for coming Hi, on the show. Here. Okay. Thank you. So I'd love to have you start, both of you, by just introducing yourself to viewers what your companies are all about, what you do. So I'll start with you, Srini. Thank you, Rebecca. As you mentioned, I'm a VP of Product and Operations at Deluxe. Uh, my role within Deluxe is to really drive operational efficiencies and process improvement across the enterprise by leveraging AI and automation. So those who don't know Deluxe, Deluxe is a long-established original payments company. Um, as a leader in the payment space, uh, we really help financial customers, big banks, large banks, small banks, to really help them get paid or pay their customers and users and also help to eventually help them grow with us. So we provide the best in class products and solutions and we keep uh, or try to keep our customers in mind to help them grow with our products and solutions. Excellent, so PK, tell us a little bit about Cubotica. Sure, so my name is PK and uh, I'm the Chief Growth Officer at Cubotica. Um, I was uh, with UiPath for nearly five years before I joined Cubotica a few months back. Um, so I'm very familiar with the UiPath platform, the product, the software. Um, so Cubotica is a company that primarily focuses on building AI and automation solutions for customers, right? We're a small company, um, so we have a very customer-oriented mindset, but we're a large company from a delivery standpoint. We've done very complex projects, delivered very complex um, automations for customers. So we're kind of mix and match of both. Um, we're, we have been partnering with uh, Deluxe for about a couple of years now. Uh, we've helped them build several automations on UiPath. We're building a comprehensive automation roadmap for Deluxe. So very excited about the partnership and uh, looking forward to this uh, discussion. So PK, you are automation specialists. Correct. Right, you're a professional services consulting company. That's correct. Right, okay, um, and, and Srini, you guys, in the payments, you help people get paid. <laughs> That's a very important <laughs> business. So Indeed. the most important thing there is I get it right and I get it fast. All right, so how is automation affecting your ability to do those two things? It's a great question. For us, automation is a huge area of focus. It's part of our strategy. And the way we would like to think about it is, you know, we don't use automations not only to just drive innovation to our end customers, but also we lose automation AI to also drive our internal operations more efficiently and, and more accurately. And so to your point, uh, what we're really looking at is looking at our business operations end to end as we support our customers taking the orders, processing the orders, shipping those orders. How can we provide that best in class experience in terms of making it uh, faster to market, getting the accuracy and the speed that we need, processing information faster, all by leveraging technology and innovation in that space. And so that's really, we are spending a lot of our time and efforts and so we're, had a few um, pilots that we have done so far, or actually production of work with automation, and we're seeing some great results so far. Well, so I'd love you to get into that. Uh, PK, what, do you want to talk about some of the most impactful or innovative use cases you've, you've had so far? Sure, so uh, let me take the case of Deluxe, right? So we built a very, um, uh, it was a complex automation where Deluxe had tons of contracts with suppliers, vendors, and, and uh, other parties and it was all in different formats, different payment terms, and it was, it was very difficult to keep track of how to pay, what to pay for certain people, right? So we use the power of AI and automation to, to bring all of these contracts under one single umbrella. So now Deluxe has a very clear vision of what these contracts entail, when people should be paid, how much they should be paid. So now they're able to avoid like overpayments or underpayments and get into like potential lawsuits and things like that. So that's one example. There was another example around um, um, making sure that the, the timesheets of employees are coming in regularly and somebody's tracking them, making sure that hours are accurate and so on. So you know, these are just a couple of examples, but we've built, what, 20 automations so far, Srini? Yeah. Um, we were able to save uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for Deluxe and for other customers. Curious as to uh, um, how the automations are evolving with respect to becoming more intelligent. Um, I mean, for example, we're a small company. Um, cash flow is everything to a small business like ours. And during ZERP, we would get a lot of big, you know, we do business with large companies. UiPath is, you know, one example, but you know, big, big companies, right? All the big 
enterprise tech companies, Amazon, IBM, HPE, et cetera. During ZERP, we would get messages like, you know, if you want to get paid fast, we'll give you a little haircut. i will be like, hmm, talk to our CFO, she'd say, no, we don't, you know, no, that's okay. Or, yes, okay, do it. That's dried up with, as interest rates have, have increased. Small example, but how are you using intelligence to sort of optimize whatever objective you have, whether it's cash flow or profitability or, or, or you know, size of payment, et cetera? Is, are, you, are we at that part of the journey yet or is that sort of future? I wonder if you could comment. Yeah, that's a great question, Dave. I think we're actually doing it right now as we, yeah. as we speak. I think the first thing we do is you start with an outcome, right? It all starts with the why and a business outcome. What do we want to achieve as a business? And for example, the case that PK had mentioned, in that case, we want to get a better understanding of our customers through our legal and contractual documents, right? We want to understand some of the details much faster, easier, so that we can serve them better. So in this case, for us is superior customer experience, faster experience, and more accurate delivery of our service to our customers. And that was a big goal for us. And in this specific case, it required us to really analyze complex legal documents that are in various different formats. Some of them are handwritten, some of them are PDFs, and some of them you can't necessarily fully understand, but we had to go through those complex landscape, get the information, digitize it, extract it, classify it, synthesize that information, and then be able to take the right level of action on those contracts and legal documents. And so that required a whole lot of sophistication. We could have solved that problem through putting more time and more bodies into it, but we didn't necessarily do that because we knew that putting a human into that, sometimes with that time mundane and repetitive task can be more costly and also can be error prone. And that's really where we wanted something that is quick, that can be proven in a really short span of time, but also relying on the right tool sets and the right partner, which is really where UiPath came into the picture. We leveraged some of the document understanding capabilities within UiPath, and so we had, we had a strong understanding of the problem, and then we chose the right tool set, in this case it was UiPath, but more importantly, we wanted to have a trusted partner who has done this before, who has done these implementations before, so that we don't reinvent the wheel, and that's really where Kubernetes and team brought the thought leadership and the implementation experience, and so that's where we were able to quickly solve this problem in a really, really short span of time, which then gathered, which basically proved that we can provide significant value to our business. In this case, it was more about hours saved. Uh, we had about 99.5% accuracy in terms of the information that we are able to understand from these contracts. Second is we've saved thousands of hours on these contracts and legal documents, which I don't think would have been possible without the UiPath and the AI. Uh, solutions that we put in place. So what's involved here? You've got um, RPA, you've got do document understanding, is there process mining going mm -hmm. on? All those all those pieces and, and, I, and, and it, so to paint a picture of us, where you are today, the kind of the as is, and where you're going with Agentic and what's going to be different? Sure, um, so it involves all of those components that you just described yeah. and more, meaning it's horses for courses. I mean, we, we, we need to select the right tool for the right uh, problem. Love that term. <laughs> it's a very British it term. It is, Steve. <laughs> yeah. um, Chunk and cheese. <laughs> yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> so we use document understanding, we use Gen AI, we use process mining, communications mining, pretty much leveraging the power of the entire UiPath platform, but making sure we use the right components at the right time to solve the business problem, right? And Deluxe is in a stage right now where They've, they've used all of the, the basic uh, features of automation. They know what automation can bring to the table. So now we are in the process of building out a very comprehensive roadmap, business unit by business unit, department by department, so that there's, a, there's an overarching automation program and there's like, you know, executive alignment, that everybody knows about it, and they have a clear vision of where they want to be in the next two to three years. That's what we're working on. Oh, nice. So Srini used the T word a lot in his, in his when we were talking last, trust. Right. And I'm imagining that that is a huge obstacle because just hearing that a lot of the documents that, that the AI was having to, to process were handwritten. Correct. And I know my own handwriting and I can barely read it a week later. So I'm just curious how you work with customers to make sure that they are, that first of all, they can trust the sources of data and that they can trust how the, how the machines are also interpreting that data. Um, so it's all about the collaboration, right? So we can never do this in silos. 
So when we work with a customer like Deluxe, um, you know, Srini has been you know, very transparent with his team, the rest of the rest of the deluxe teams in terms of what we're doing. So it's a very collaborative effort. Everyone knows what we're doing. Uh, we do what is called as user acceptance testing, where the deluxe folks come in and test what we do. So that's how we build trust, right? Transparency, communication, being able to tell what the other person is doing. Um, and this just grows over time. And you know, that's what we've seen. Yeah. I'd like to add a thought there. I think for us, for me at least within the organization, what's being critical is engaging our stakeholders much early, right? With using this as an example, we were able to prove that by leveraging our mission, it can provide significant value, but then we brought them along the journey. They were from day one where we looked at the data and we said what AI and automation can do. We showed them the results and it took us several weeks to tweak and optimize. And then not only that, then we took that data set and we put it into our sales team and other teams which had no previous context to it and they reviewed that information. That made them more comfortable. And so it went through all of those testing and change management and bringing folks along which then really helped with the overall and the trust, but it was not all great and easy to begin with. Uh, there was a lot of learnings for us in terms of how we use leverage data. Compliance or regulatory is huge for us. Deluxe as a company, we serve some of the biggest banks. Our standards for compliance, regulatory, and security is very, very high. And so we had to go through those set of checklists and requirements working with the tech team to ensure that the solutions that we put in place are safe, it's, uh, it's a, it adheres to the strict uh, compliance and security and regulatory requirements, which again, all of that helps from a technology standpoint to also build a little bit more confidence and trust. And then when we piloted this, we found success and then we really are trying to scale it now with all of our customer bases. So I have kind of an awkward question, given that we're here in UiPath's backyard, but I'll be respectful. So have you guys seen or heard the Klarna story, right? The VCs talk about Klarna, they're going to replace all their, their SaaS. Um, and when we started doing surveys with our partner ETR, when ChatGPT first came out, um, a lot of people felt like, oh, well this is magic, it can replace everything, and RPA was one of those sort of targets. Um, how did you guys react when you saw you know, initial LLMs come out? Was there concern inside your organization or the customer base or inside, or not, maybe not concern, but anticipation that, hey, your CFO, maybe we don't have to spend all this money anymore. Maybe we can just ask ChatGPT to do it. So we saw that the impact of Gen AI on existing software um, was somewhat negative in the early days and RPA popped up as one of those you know, areas. And then people realized that the, the, the data has changed. People realized, well, this stuff's not so easy. You can't just ask ChatGPT. <laughs> and so we started to see RPA again pick up again in those, in those automations as people, you know, people, Gartner calls it the trough of dis disillusionment. Um, how did you guys think about that? Uh, Daniel talked about today about the relationship between bots, and agents. So how does this all play out in your mind? I wonder if you can each just go back to what you thought at the time. Did you feel like, oh wait, maybe we can replace some of this? Or did you sort of know that it wasn't going to be that simple? Yeah, of course, that's a great question. I think for us, is proving that value was one of the things that are paramount, right? Once you take some of the key use cases, prove that value to it and show them that there's significant outcomes that you can drive, then it becomes opens up, the door opens up for our organization, so proving that value has been really, really key, but also putting the user in the forefront of everything, right? I think there's a natural trepidation that, hey, automation can come and probably replace my jobs, or I don't need to do those anymore, my AI is going to take over, but it's not necessarily really taking over the job, but it's really changing the job. It's really augmenting them. It's showing them new ways of working so that they don't have to do those mundane repetitive tasks. They can focus their time more on insightful work, analytical work, analytical type of work, and more importantly, spend more time with their customers, right? Whether it means servicing them, supporting them, um, talking to them from a pre-sales, sales, and post-sales perspective. But some of these use cases, deploying them, really helped us unlock that uh, education and awareness across the company, which then made it more easier for us to then look at other great opportunities with this 
value that we created. Now we have other people in the organization reaching out to us and say, hey, can we can, can get chatbot? Can you build a bot for this? Can you say AI solve for this problem? And so on and so forth. So we've gotten some momentum there, which we're very, very thrilled about. Again, it's really around how we go to go to market quickly prove with a partner like Kubernetes and using and leveraging all of the tool sets that we have with UiPath has been really key for us. Just to add to what Srini said, I'm of the firm opinion that humans can never be replaced. It, there's never going to be a time on Earth where machines are roaming around and no humans around. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So as tools evolve, as new technologies come in, it's really up to us to understand what the power of those tools are, how we can use those technologies, and that's why you need humans. Because you need somebody to understand and use those technologies, right? So tools are going to evolve, new technologies are going to come in. How do you marry what you have today with the new stuff coming in and get the greatest benefit? That is a secret. Yeah. So we, we're here at UiPath Forward. What are you seeing, what are you hearing, what kind of conversations are you having that makes you most excited to go back to work on Monday? <laughs> Great question. A couple of takeaways for me is uh, really the theme around transforming the AI is huge, it's big, and uh, the, whole, the whole narrative around AI-powered automation, which is now on automation on steroids, like how do you use AI within your automation? I think we talked a lot about agenting automation today. Uh, pretty, we saw some pretty cool demos today, uh, which I'm pretty sure those are all the same complex problems that companies like Glass and many of us are looking to solve. So I'm pretty excited, pretty uh, upbeat about that, and we're probably going to look into some of that, but I think the whole process of agent now really trying to help orchestrate and do the automation with an intelligence, I think that is exciting. How about you? Um, you know, a uh, lot of cool stuff coming out uh, uh, in the market today. Um, UiPath made a few announcements around the new, new, new features, new tools that are coming. At Kubotica, we're always ready to embrace what's coming new. Um, you know, we have a Tiger team that's looking at new, new softwares, new products from UiPath and trying to learn, you know, train our employees, train our customers on how to use it. So, you know, exciting times, and uh, I'm just happy we are part of these, uh, this day and age where we embrace AI. Indeed, it is. It is an exciting time. Srini PK, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, the guys. Have thank you. Appreciate thank the you. conversation. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of our live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching the Cube, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.